Hi, my name is Alexey and I'm a motion designer. And in this video, I want to show you one thing or one trick, or one approach that really helps you to, I don't know, to be not the junior animator, not the junior motion designer and to be like, labeled as a profi. For me, it's easier to show on example. I want to make animation that this thing comes to our shot and we have this notebook open. First of all, I'm going to set up the final position. It would be like zero, zero and move it outside of the frame. I'll crop to vertical or maybe to square, I don't know yet, like this. And let's set up the camera, so frame our shot and we have this, for example, final loop. Let's set up to square, yeah, like this and we have Simple motion from side and open the screen. Keyframe and close this stuff. This is the basic animation I think you have been doing for, for a lot of years. And of course, one of the things you can improve drastically is playing with keyframes, playing with easings. I think we can delete all these unused tracks. H to maximize the view, not the viewport, the graph. And yeah, this is much better. And also we have this laptop button and track part, his lead here, checking what is rotating here, oh, some problem, we don't need keyframes here, here, I'm selecting by clicking on the S or P or R and holding Ctrl Shift left click, so it's opening, we need only one track, like this. Usually this is the end or we can play with this and offset lead. We have keyframes, offset them to have this overlapping zone. So during movement of the table, we have opening of our notebook. So this is one of the common animations I think you have seen a lot and usually but not usually it's widely spread and it's pretty okay it's much better than we have in default scene with default settings with splines and all that stuff so it's pretty good all right but I want to incremental save this thing and I suggest you and maybe show you the things how we can go further for this, we need to redo all preparation. Delete this one, this one, and arrange a bit in a different way. First of all, of course, I select table, LG, and this would be like move. No. And it doesn't matter where it would be positioned or move and rotation. I will make two animation for this particular element. And I want my table, when it comes, rotate a bit to imitate the friction and bounce here. But for this, I need to set up in the front corner or left limit, I don't know, this side of our table. 
going changing to cube going here axis center move it like this you can use snapping for this tutorial it's not necessary we can set up pretty close to ideal point i think somewhere here and now we can do this trick and let's do this first of all i will match the movement here and maybe rotation after that moving to the side keyframe animation f curve and shrink down extend these tangents shrink down the distance between the first keyframe and this space to speed up the movement maybe more i'm holding control to shift tangent parallel and not having any angles here there is a rain outside so maybe you can hear some raindrops in the recording you're not going crazy it's how it is so like this and maybe i move it closer now we have this i dislike this breaking of the spline because tangent went to the left it shouldn't cross the vertical line of this frame so like this boom maybe a bit and here i want to add a rotation keyframe this thing oh not this one not this one this one going up because of the friction for example and then going down Going here so yeah there is rotation h and check it i don't believe in this so now we need to adjust the speed of our animation move it a bit closer to each other like this yeah so during the movement we should have our table goes up and then fall down looks much better boom and i think we can speed up the last drop maybe like this yeah this looks much much better holding shift to break the tangents yeah for example like this going up then going down playing with a length of animation and it's up to you what style you should pick maybe you would have double bounce for example going down then going up the secondary bounce and then going down once again playing with this thing or i can play and break only the right one so and for this for this tutorial i will keep a single animation and then we have this laptop laptop i will duplicate and move it to a new node null and here i would set a zero angle so they own oh, not zero 90 degrees but inside i would have to reset the position it was 113 so it was directly like this so we have 90 degrees here and more degrees here 
I want to add a slippery effect. So here we have movement. Like this. For a lower friction to imitate a slippery surface of the table. Let's check. And usually, when table goes up, something falls down. Minus 60. So it's not uh, the matter of the digits, because with different kind of scale and proportion, you will have different numbers. Just the approach. So going up, and you see that when it pops our notebook can stop the movement. Maybe shrink down the animation. Oh no, extend the animation. So, like this. It's not the perfect, it's not the perfect, but then we compare with our basic one. And of course, this display opening, we need to set up the keyframes. Let's set minus 100. So, round number, zero. And it looks much better. Also, I will add some extra, maybe, flexibility. Maybe not so exaggerating. Our lead minus 1.5 and then goes to minus 100. So just a little touch of animation. So going up and then opening and some bounce here. Checking. Yeah, maybe slower. No, it's too slow. Like this. And also, we can play with the orientation. For example, to match the last point of animation, or maybe in the middle, 36, we have here a keyframe for position, and I'll match the rotation too. here like this it's small addition it's not clearly visible but i think it will be noticeable and you can exaggerate of course once again all this thing so you have additional animation i dislike the speed so they should be like boom a faster rotation for our I guess table maybe shrink down this zone and extend this one so shh, boom once again shh, boom. yes this could be this could work 60 And I think that's it that I want to show you. So we have different additional animation here. And now you can compare the first animation and the second one. I think we can create null, copy this, dropping here, offset it, going outside of the camera. Let's hide animation during the playback. And you can compare what animation will be looking more professional. This is the small adjustment that you can make and add to your basic animation. 
that will create additional feeling that you are a professional guy, that you have experience in this whole animation tricks and nuances, and also will increase kind of the appealing, I think, of your video, of your animation, because of these small adjustments that didn't take a lot of time. Hope you like the result we get here. Let me loop it. Of course, we can render this thing out and all the stuff, but it's a uh, pretty technical, a directional advice for you that you can improve your animation with extra five, 10 minutes of work on additional elements with offsetting animation, with extra details. I hope you like it. Thank you. Have a nice day.